Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm gonna to be painting four season film strip and I'm gonna be sipping on some Spike Seltzer. And if you enjoy this video, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you'll find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you are painting along with me, you're more than welcome to switch up the size, but, that, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, deep yellow, burnt umber, which I'll call brown, cobalt blue, fire red, green oxide, and Mars black. And of course, you can switch up those colors if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a standard number two pencil, and then I have two brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush, and I have a number five round brush. And throughout the painting process, I will refer to these as small and large. And of course, you can switch those up too if you'd like to. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably want a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I do provide you with a couple of additional resources that can help you through your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the fancy palette that I use <laughs> and the paint and uh, brushes and all that good stuff. So that's there for you. But there's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we are creating an outline for our film strip. So I'm gonna be using my um, pencil and I'm just gonna give you a series of dots and then we're gonna connect those dots and hopefully by the time we're done, we've got some sort of wavy shape that we can use as a film strip for our painting. So you're gonna visually find kind of the halfway point between left and right at the top of your canvas. And then you can come down maybe about two or three inches and make yourself a little bit of a mark, a vertical or a horizontal mark. Then you're gonna come down directly below that, shy of your halfway point. So I would say if this is about your halfway point, you're gonna come up a little bit, maybe about an inch from there, and make yourself another mark. And then what you'll do, if this is your halfway point, you're gonna come down to, this would be about a third of the way up your canvas, something like that. And then you're gonna come down directly below that to maybe about an inch, inch and a half from the bottom of the canvas. So the goal here is to have this section a little bit shorter in height than this section. So you could use your brush or anything to just kind of measure to see if one of them is shorter. So mine's, this one's taller by about a half of an inch to an inch on my canvas. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna visually kind of pick the halfway point between here and here, and I'm gonna to travel to the left, and I'm gonna be maybe just a little bit lower than that halfway point. I'm gonna make myself a mark that's about maybe an inch and a half to two inches away from the edge of my canvas. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with these two. So I'm gonna kind of go from the middle, come over to the left, somewhere around the two inch mark away from the um, edge of the canvas, you can make yourself a vertical mark, something like that. Then we're gonna travel over to the right side of our canvas. So I'm gonna have two marks that are about, uh, I would say a quarter of the way into my canvas. One of them's gonna be a little bit higher than this one, so maybe about an inch and a half or so. I'm gonna make myself a little bit of a mark there. Gonna go directly up from that. I want it to be a little bit higher than this one. Make myself another mark. And then we're gonna travel all the way to the right of the canvas. You can come from this mark and travel all the way over to the right, shy from the edge of the canvas, about two inches, make yourself a mark. Go up from that. 
It can be either parallel with this one or maybe a little bit higher than this one and make yourself a mark. So we should have two, four, six, eight, nine, ten marks at this point. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect our dots. <laughs> so we're going to be connecting with some waves. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to take this first dot over on the right hand side and I'm going to come down, not, not swoop it too much, but down a little bit, connect it to here and over to this mark here. So here we go. I'm going to start right here. When I swoop it down, it's going to be below this mark here. And then I'm going to come back up. And I can even travel higher than this if I want to. I can go a little bit higher like this and then just kind of bring it around in like a swoop like that. I'm going to do the same thing from this dot to this dot, but I need to connect this one to over here. So I'm going to keep it at the same angle and then as it comes towards here, I scoop it down even further. So here we go. I'm going to come down a little bit like this. I'm going to travel and, and hit this mark here, bring it up like this, and then I'm going to come down and meet this mark right here. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to connect, well, we can just connect these two. This is an easy one right here. Let's just do a vertical line right here, something like that. So now I'm going to connect to this dot, this dot, to this dot right here. And this, in essence, is going to be the rest of this curve from the top of the film reel. So you could go from here and back up this way, or you can go from here to here. Whatever is um, mechanically working for your brain, feel free to do it. I just want to make sure this looks like a curve, a curved line the whole way. So something like this. And you can see I'm just kind of sketching to make sure that I keep it in that curved motion, something like that. I can connect this mark to this mark with a vertical line. Then I need to connect this mark to here with a, another curved line that's similar to this one. So something like this. And of course you can modify them once you, know, once you get them on there. If they're not perfect, you can certainly change them up a little bit. And then I want to connect this mark, this edge to this edge, like this. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect, and if you miss your mark, you can just kind of modify it as, you, as need be. So something like that. That's what erasers are for. That's what erasers and paint are for, to hide our mistakes. And then we just need to make a little um, corner over here and one up there. So I'm going to come in here maybe, I would say, about two inches, make myself a little bit of a vertical line that's taller than here. So something like that. And then I'm just going to kind of give myself a little bit of a rounded corner, something like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing up here. Maybe this one's at a little bit different of an angle. So I'm going to come in this about maybe two inches. I'm going to make myself a vertical line almost up to the top of my canvas. And then I just can connect this with the remainder of the, the corner line. And then we have to erase one line. We're going to erase this right here. So as soon as we erase this, you will see the full curve of this. And then what we'll do is we're going to be using our large brush for the next step. So once you've got this done and you've got all your little tweaks, don't worry if you can still see like a little ghost line in through here, no big deal. Well, once you've got that done, you can put your pencil away, take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting the background. So I want mine to just be kind of a neutral color. I'm gonna be using my large brush to, to paint it on. So the colors that I'm gonna be using are brown, yellow, and white. And I'm gonna pre-mix myself just like a creamy beige kind of color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take some of my yellow, a little bit of my brown, and some of my white and just mix it together until I get a color that I like. <laughs> so I, I'm going on the lighter side um, because I don't want it to overpower or like a medium kind of tone. I don't want it to take away from my focal point, which is the film strip. I just really want this to be complementary and kind of just background noise to my, to my, um, the actual focal point. So I'm going maybe somewhere in this vicinity, maybe a little, 
a little lighter. It will turn a little bit darker when it dries, so just kind of plan for that as you are creating your color. And just make sure that you create enough to paint the entire background. Um, I do like to kind of mix myself an extra amount just in case I want to do a second coat. That is totally something that you may want to do or you may not want to do. So just when you're, when you're mixing, just make sure that you've mixed yourself enough. And then once I've got the color that I want, I'm just going to paint it in. I don't need to paint it in any specific um, brush stroke. I just want to get a nice even coat throughout the entire background. So if you feel that once you've got it on here, as it's drying that you can see your brush strokes and you're like, oh, I don't really like that. I want a really nice smooth coat. Then I would definitely recommend doing a second coat on it. But the first, you know, you'll, you'll know better once you, once you see it's dry. Um, and I'm going right up to my pencil mark. You can even bump into your pencil mark. And because I have chosen to just use a standard number two pencil, my pencil lead will bleed into my surrounding paint, which I'm okay with because I just like things to look like they've all gone together anyways. <laughs> so I'm okay with that. Um, if you're not okay with that, then you could use a, a water soluble type pencil, like a watercolor pencil, or you could use chalk or something like that, that um, definitely won't be as visible when it um, intermingles with the paint, but uh, I'm okay with it. And, and a second coat would eliminate that look as well. So you feel free to adjust this and make it as pristine as you would like. I'm just gonna kind of get it on here and then I'll probably let mine dry and see if I want a second coat. When you're working with light colors like this, or light, uh, relatively light, you can usually get it in one coat because it the because you have a light background from the from the canvas itself you can usually get a pretty good coat on the first shot but again let it dry see if you if it has given you the the coverage that you want to and if it hasn't then i would just recommend go ahead and do a second coat on it I think I, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do. I'm going to wait and see what it looks like when it dries. And then um, if I want to do another coat, I will, I will just quickly put that on there. But you can see I'm going right up to my pencil mark. I'm painting right into the pencil mark because I don't want any unpainted canvas between my film strip and my background color. So I'm playing it on the safe side and then, and just bumping right into my pencil mark. And then that way um, I won't have any unpainted canvas. And then we are going to be using, actually we're gonna use, I think we're gonna use our pencil for the next step. Cause I wanted to um, separate some of these panels that I missed while we were doing that initial step. So we're gonna use our pencil for the next step. So once you've got your background as painted beautifully as you'd like to, you can put your large brush away somewhere, take out your pencil, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are finishing our sketch in the film reel. So this is gonna account for separating our seasonal panels and then we're gonna do a quick outline for the rolling hill in each panel. So how I'm gonna do this is, for me, I'm gonna have my four seasons and then I'll have like a little extra piece of um, the film reel at the end that doesn't have one of the seasons. And I'm electing to put my seasons spring, summer, fall, and winter, but you can put yours whatever season you want. Not that that matters at this point, but just so you have a mental thought process. So the this part of the film reel is gonna, I want it to look closer to us, so it's gonna be bigger. The panels are gonna be wider than the ones back here. So I'm gonna do one panel here, one is gonna wrap around the edge, and then two back here. So the film reel 
is going to be kind of going around. So I want this one to be my biggest one. So I'm going to go maybe a little bit shy of where this comes here, make myself a vertical line. Now you just got to be careful that you actually make it vertical and not slanted. So that's why I just repositioned my body. So because <laughs> when you're working with curved lines like this, your brain wants you to tip those those lines as well. So then I'm going to make another one somewhere in this vicinity and through here. I am not um, using a ruler to measure and make sure that I have these exactly correct, but my main goal is to have this one bigger than the ones back here. So I'm going to do the same thing. I want two panels up here so I can almost kind of cut it in half, maybe a little bit to the right of the halfway mark. Make myself one there. I'm going to make another one in through here another one in through here. And we will have um, black bands in between here too. So if it's not perfect, don't worry, you can kind of readjust it that, you know, when we get to that. So as long as this is a little bit wider than those ones up there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make myself a very simplified sketch. I'm gonna have kind of a rolling little hill, something like this, and then maybe another one over in through here. So this panel is going to look similar to this one. So if you came up about, I came up about a quarter of the way or a third of the way on the right hand side, come up about the same there and that's going to mimic what you see here. And then I've got a little rolling hill, something like that. And wherever this is, this is a, a little bit higher than the halfway point. So I'm going to come over to here a little bit higher than the halfway point and that's gonna be that side of the hill. So keep in mind, when we're doing this, we're seeing the front side of the um, film strip, and here we're seeing the back side. So these images are gonna, in essence, be reversed. So I just kept it pretty simple with the height of these. So what I'm gonna do, I can see already, since it has turned the corner, this halfway mark, I'm just gonna do a halfway mark here, a halfway mark here, a third here, or somewhere there, and a third here. And now I can just make my, my couple of little hills. So I'm in essence making this in reverse on the other side. So something like that. And it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just having fun. We're just, you know, doing a, a painterly and impressionistic kind of thing. And then these are going to be vacant. And then we're going to switch to our large brush for the next step. So once you've got this all nice and sketched out, you can put your pencil away, take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting our skies. I'm gonna be using my big bristle brush. The colors that I'm gonna be using are blue, white, brown, and red, and yellow. I'm using a lot of colors in my sky. So I am gonna be doing my spring sky blue and white, my autumn sky blue and white, my winter sky is gonna be brown, blue, and white, and then my summer sky, I'm gonna have like a sunrise or a sunset kind of look to it. So I'm gonna tackle my blue and whites first. I'm gonna put some blue and white on my brush at the same time. I am not terribly concerned about the edges where it meets my background or where it meets each panel because we're gonna have a beautifully executed black line that's gonna clean up all of those edges. So don't worry if you bump into anything. I don't have much paint on my brush because I'm using a big brush in a very small space, so I do not need a lot of paint on my brush. I'm gonna have my sky be darker at the top and lighter at the bottom. So here we go. I'm just kind of painting my blue and white like this. I know I'm doing another sky with the same color, so I, again, I don't need much paint. So I didn't even reload my brush. I'm gonna go ahead and put some blue and white at the top of my autumn sky. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up white paint without washing my brush and get my skies to go lighter and lighter as they come down towards the horizon. So once I've got my, my spring and my autumn sky, I'm gonna transition to my winter sky because I know I'm gonna be using blue and white in that one as well. Um, I'm just gonna have the addition of brown on my brush. So 
I'm not going to need to wash my brush. I'm a very um, lazy brush washer. If you watch my <laughs> videos, I don't wash my brush very often. I like my colors to talk to one another, so that's why I end up, well, that's my excuse, I guess, but um, I really like my, I, I like the way that things blend together. My, when I look at, you know, nature and natural organic things, all the colors seem to run together, so I like to not wash my brush very often and just let happen what's going to happen. So I've got my spring and my autumn sky done. So now I'm going to move on to my winter sky. So I have blue and white on my brush. I'm putting, picking up a little bit more blue and white, but also a touch of brown. So I'm going to have this sky looking a little bit more I would say kind of on the cloudy, wintry kind of um, desaturated kind of side with that brown in there it'll make it look a little bit more atmospheric towards the towards the time of the year and then I'm gonna get my sky to go a little bit lighter as it comes down towards that uh, horizon so I just picked up a touch of white and you might again want to do a couple of layers on your skies you just make them to to represent that particular season. You might not want to have winter as the front one. Maybe you want to put your summer one in the front. You can really put these seasons in whatever order you want. You can even throw them out of order if you want to. You could have, you know, fall and then spring and then summer and then winter. You could, you could get wild and crazy with your seasonal orders. I'm washing and drying my brush to go to my summer sky. So I washed and dried my brush. I am going to start right here with white because I want it to look like there's kind of a sunrise or a sunset that's peeking its pretty head over the mountains. I just wiped my brush off on my paper towel and I'm picking up a touch of yellow just to get this to be really nice and vibrant as it's going into the atmosphere of the sky. So something like that. Now I'm gonna pick up a teeny tiny bit of red on my brush just to get some real sunsetty colors in there. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more yellow and white to maybe get some oranges happening in there. And again, I'm not really concerned about it, how it touches that next um, panel because we're going to be um, adding that border between them. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of blue and red on my brush up at the top of this sky to give it almost like a purpley kind of dark sunsetty or sunrise um, clouds up at the top. And then I am gonna wash and dry my brush before I finish this sky because I wanna put some rays of sunshine coming from that sun in through there. So once I've got my colors in my sky, I'm just washing my brush really quick, making sure I don't have any of that blue left on it. And I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of white paint, so little that I, you can brush it off on your, on your paper towel. And then from my sun, I'm just gonna kind of pull up these beautiful rays of sunshine to make sure we know that this is the summer, the summer panel. And then we're gonna use the same brush for the next step. So once you've got all of your skies beautifully executed, you can wash and dry this big brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting our land for each season. I'm gonna be using my big bristle brush and I am going to be using green, yellow, and white green, yellow, and white, and brown, green, red, and brown, and then maybe black, blue, and white. I think that's how it's gonna go. <laughs> if I change it, I'll let you know. But I'm gonna start right here. I am going to start with green and yellow on my brush. I Again, I'm just using my bristle brush. I want these, um, to look like hills that are being lit up by some sort of um, light source, probably the sun somewhere. So I'm gonna have them a little bit darker at the bottom and maybe in this little crevice where the two meet. And then as I go towards the top, I'm using more green 
and white. And my trick is I do not have a lot of paint on my brush and I'm just kind of using like a dotting or like a little bit of a swirling type technique. I want this one to be really nice and bright and in your face with lots of new life to it. So I am gonna try and make this one pretty darn light, probably even lighter than my summer one. Um, but you can certainly adjust your colors however you see fit or however it's really speaking to you. So I'm gonna put a little bit more white and yellow on here just to make sure that it is really screaming. I'm springtime, I'm fully alive, I wanna, you know, everything's gonna grow so nicely on my, my fresh new grass. And so I just really want there to be a lot of springtime feel to it. So lots of yellow and white on that one and just a little bit darker as the hill comes back um, towards the bottom. And then I'm gonna go right on to the next hill and the next one is going to be green, yellow, white, and I'm also gonna use brown because I want it to look like it's more um, grass that's been there a while and it's a little bit more um, fortified and sturdy. So I'm gonna start with some yellow and white on my brush. I just wiped my brush off on my paper towel. My sunshine is here, so that's where the brightest of my grass is gonna go. My yellow and white is gonna go where that sun is kind of peeking its head right over, right over that little hill, something like that. And then I'm gonna start moving into maybe a little bit more white in through there just to get it, just get a little bit more of that bright sunshine popping its head on top of those little crests of the hill. Now I'm gonna pick up some more green and this is gonna to start to go on the opposite side of those hills. So if you need to, you can certainly, you know, just keep dabbing away. If you feel like it, you've muddled it and it's gotten all colored, is all the colors are kind of looking like they're the same and they're blending too much on you, then that probably means that you should wash and dry your brush. You might have too many colors on there at this point. Um, and that can happen when we're using multiple colors in such a small space and we're trying to get them to transition from one to the next. So don't, don't be alarmed if that happens to you. It's definitely a natural kind of thing that would, um, would happen. As I get towards the bottom of the hill, I'm gonna be using some green and brown on my brush. And again, I'm not using much paint at all. And it's okay if you bump into your, um, your background. Again, we're gonna be cleaning up all of those edges with that um, border that we'll be putting on later. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Just making sure I want this to look a little bit darker than that one and it does to me so that that works out well and then I'm going to come on over into my autumn one so I just washed and dried my brush real quick I'm going to be using green red and brown so I think I'm going to start with just some some green paint on my brush just to kind of almost get this polka dotted a bit something like this use a little bit more green up at the top and I wanted to scream autumn so to me there's lots of red in autumn so without washing my brush I just picked up a little bit of red I don't want to overdo the red so I just picked up um, green and brown now and I'm really just kind of polka dotting this I don't need it to do anything fancy here just give me the idea that these are autumn type colors you could throw some yellow in there too. That would definitely make it more on the rusty kind of side, which will help to sell the story that it is in fact autumn. So again, green, brown, and red are my colors. And it can go dark if you want it to go dark. You can use more of the red and the brown. That's really gonna help to Again, tell people that it's that it's an that it's the autumn panel. Um, I am going to try and keep the top of that hill a little bit on the lighter side, just to tell the viewer that it is the top of a hill. Um, we'll be able to um, sell that a little bit more too when we put the tree on later. But I am just kind of dotting down by the edge here, maybe picking up. I think I'm going to pick up a little bit more green just to get that the top of the hill. You know, I think I'm going to put green and yellow. 
I'm adding a color to this panel. I just put some green and yellow on here just so I can get that top to be just a little bit more, have a little bit more color and a little bit more life to it. So yeah, that, that works for me. And then I'm gonna wash and dry my brush for my winter panel. So my winter panel is gonna be black and white. And if I feel that I want a little bit of um, coldness in it, I can add a touch of the blue or if you feel that you want it to be a little bit on the um, dirtier kind of side, like there's no more, there's no more grass left, you can add some brown to it. So there's some black without washing my brush, or that was black and white. Without washing my brush, I'm picking up a little bit more white. I want it to go lighter and lighter as it goes towards the top of my little hills. So something like this. And again, you can use like a little swirling type um, brush stroke. I'm picking up more white as I go towards the top of that hill. You could do dots, you know, whatever, again, is easiest for you to, to translate on here. I'm going right into this little area here, trying to keep a little bit of that hill evidence. So I put a little bit of darkness between those two hills, just like I did on the other ones. And then maybe pop in just a little bit more of that bright snow at the top of these hills, just so you can really feel the feel the the fluffiness of the snow and then we're going to switch brushes to our small brush so once you've got your land all nice and painted in here you can put this large brush away somewhere take out your small brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we are painting some tree trunks and branches. So I'm gonna use my small brush and the colors I'm using are black and brown. So each one of these panels is supposed to depict the same landscape or close to it. <laughs> and what I'm gonna do is I wanna place the trees in the same spot on each one. So how I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna place it on the inside of the shortest hill. So for the, black, for the winter, it would go here, for the autumn, it's gonna go here. Then we reverse it on these two. So it's the inside of the shortest hill. So it'll go about here and about here. So I'm gonna use black and brown on my brush at the same time. And I know that this tree is gonna be the most visible because there's not gonna be leaves on it. So this one is the one I'm gonna take the most care and attention to. <laughs> and then the other ones, I don't really need to do a whole heck of a lot to. So when I paint um, my trees, I do like to give them a little bit of a natural um, element to them and make them look a little bit realistic. So when I look at trees, typically the bottom of the tree is gonna be a little bit wider than um, the rest of the tree. So as I'm building it, I keep that in mind. I'm gonna have a nice big characteristic kind of tree over here. I'm gonna have some big branches coming out maybe something like this. And it doesn't have to be really super detailed, but make it something that, you know, is works for you. You know, you might like to have broken branches. You might like to have, you know, really big, solid branches, whatever works for you. This tree is the only tree that really um, needs to have a lot of any of that kind of detail to it. But when I'm building this tree, I am kind of keeping in mind, I've got to somehow replicate it to, to be believable on the other trees. So I am kind of just doing maybe three or four main branches and then a lot of little kind of sticks and stuff coming off of the, of the edges of it. And again, you can really have fun with it branches can cross over one another they can look broken however you know exciting you want it to look is totally fine by me so that's the one that's going to have the most detail to it and hopefully my head wasn't in the way too much on that one um, so now i'm going to go and replicate it over here but really i'm just looking for the main characteristics so i've got a big um wide trunk somewhere in through here 
then I've got a bigger branch that comes up to the left, something like that. Then I've got another one that kind of comes off of this one. And maybe yours ends up only being, you know, two or three branches. You can really decide what is um, easiest for you to do. So I've got that one, and then I've got this big one coming off of this side in through here. That's almost the same length as that. And then I'm just gonna add a whole bunch of little branches to, to make it believable. I've got this, oops, I got white paint on my brush somehow. Um, there's this little kind of one that goes, shoots off to the side. And then I'm, and of course I know that this one's gonna have a whole bunch of leaves on it. So I'm really not terribly concerned about making um, all of these branches exactly the same as I see them on that one because I know a lot of them are gonna be hidden. So that's good for me. Then I've gotta go over here and now I've gotta reverse it. So I'm gonna start at the bottom of the tree in through here because I know the base is pretty similar. And this can be smaller because it's farther off in the distance. And then I'm gonna stick with my main branch that I can see the easiest. So my thickest branch has gotta go kind of in the opposite direction and it's going up towards the top of that film reel. I've got one coming up from here. I've got one coming. It's tough sometimes to reverse things, so so good luck. <laughs> um, but but the more difficult, the more main branches you have, the more difficult it is. So, um, and again, I've got to do it in reverse. That's the, that's the tricky part is getting it to go in reverse. So, but again, I know I'm going to have a whole bunch of leaves and stuff on this tree. So I'm, I'm not terribly concerned about it being exactly perfect, but if I can get a couple of the characteristics then I'm doing well. So I've got that and then maybe just some some little loose branches here and there. But I've got the gist of it. I've got that main trunk and now I'm gonna go ahead and do it one more time over here. So similar position right at the crook of this hill right in through here. And now, now I can just look at this one over here. So it's much easier once you've got that, that first one um, reversed you can it's a little bit easier to just kind of follow along now with the other one and again I'm not terribly concerned if I have exactly the same amount of branches you know a tree can certainly morph into a little bit of a different um, looking tree throughout time because it will have branches that break it will have you know new ones that grow so don't feel that you've got to do it you know, to the T, unless you have uh, one of those A-type personalities like I tend to have sometimes where you feel like every little thing has to be exactly in order. And then again, we're gonna be putting um, a whole bunch of leaves on this one too, so I think, I think I'm pretty good with this one. We're going to be using our, um, we'll use our big brush for the next step. So once you've got your, your trees in place here, you can put your small brush away, take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are finishing our trees with whatever you're gonna put on top of them and under them. <laughs> so I'm using my big brush, so I'm gonna have leaves on my spring, my summer, and my autumn, and then I'm gonna have snow on my winter one. And my spring one, I'm also gonna have maybe some little flowers underneath it. And my autumn one, I might have some uh, leaves that have fallen on the ground. My winter one, I might have a pile of snow underneath it or something. So, or maybe some grass underneath here too. So we're just gonna have fun finishing our trees and the stuff under them. I'm gonna put a snowman later, so <laughs> that'll be a different step. So I'm gonna start with my big brush. I'm just gonna start with green paint on it. So I'm gonna use green, so I'm gonna use a lot of colors on this step. I'm using green, yellow, brown, white, um, and red. So I'm probably not gonna be using black and blue, but all of my other colors. So I just started with some green. I'm gonna start on this tree here and just kind of get my little clumps of, I'm just using the corner of my brush, my little clumps of leaves. I don't want to take away from my whole um, sunrise, sunset effect that I have in the back, 
but I don't want my tree to look too sparse either. So I really, um, if, I, if I paint over too much of my sky, that's okay. I just picked up a little bit of brown as well. I'd like there to be some nice undertones to my leaves. So I just picked up some green and brown at the same time. You can, of course, go all the way up to the edge. We're gonna be um, putting some that border on later too. So don't worry about that. And I will be putting a little bit of yellow on here in a minute, but while I have the green and the brown on my brush, I'm gonna come over here and put a little bit of some, some grassy stuff underneath here. I'm gonna put some flowers in a minute, but I, I didn't wanna wash my brush, so I'm just gonna use that there. Uh, let's see, what else am I gonna do? I'm gonna put a little bit of yellow and white onto my dirty brush right now. Little So now I have yellow, white, green, and brown, and I'm putting some little pieces of grass down at the bottom of this tree. So just with the corner of my brush, I can just kind of pull up a couple of little cute pieces of grass at the bottom. I can also, now that I have these lighter colors on here, put a couple of little pops of lighter highlighted leaves on here. So green and yellow and white are gonna give me a bit of sunshine throughout the leaves on this tree and through here. So something like that. And again, you don't have to go too um, bold on this. This is just something that we want the viewer to visually understand that this is a nice summer tree here. I'm gonna wash and dry my big brush right now because I'm gonna put some, uh, some spring blossoms on this tree over here. So I want pink. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of red and a little bit of white and just make myself a pretty blossoming pink color. So I've got some pink. This will also be some flowers at the bottom. So I need it kind of in the similar formation as here. So I'm just gonna kind of take, I'm watching over here to see where I kind of put the formation of the leaves. And that's what I'm gonna do over on this one as well. I just have that pink on my brush right now. I'll add a little bit of uh, white to it in a couple of minutes, maybe a little bit of red too. But just starting off with my pink in here just to get my blossoming tree started. Maybe a little bit more up there. Yeah, and then I'm gonna put a little bit at the bottom of my tree to make it look like there's some, some flowers down here. Some nice spring flowers. And then I'm not gonna wash my brush. I'm just picking up a little bit of white to put some white highlights or some dimension throughout this tree, throughout the little blossoming leaves, something like that. And you can also, if you want to, if it's not popping enough for you, you can, I'm gonna do this right now. I'm picking up a touch of red with my dirty brush. I'm gonna pop in a little bit of red down in these flowers down here. And it's just polka dots, just polka dots with the corner of my brush. I think I want a little bit more fluff in my, in my blossoms up in through here. So I'm just dabbing it a little bit more, just make sure it's nice and, and full and it's got a lot, of, a, a lot of life in it. There we go, that's looking pretty. And then I am going to be washing my brush to get down to my autumn tree. So wash and dry my brush. For my autumn tree, I'm gonna be using red, yellow. You can use green too, because autumn leaves start as green leaves and then they turn the red and the yellow colors, but I'm gonna start with just some red paint. And again, similar formation. I know that I've got a little cluster. Ooh, it's reverse though. This one's reverse. So I'm looking at this cluster and then it kind of goes up like this something like that, a little bit in the middle of the tree, something like that. And then we have this little, this little baby one over here, just kind of getting that there. Maybe some in through here. I'm gonna put a couple that have fallen onto my ground. So I'm gonna just pop in a couple of little bright red spots down there. I'm not gonna wash my brush, I'm just gonna pick up some of my yellow which is gonna, well, maybe I'll mix it a little bit. It's gonna make a little bit of an orangey kind of color and just pop in a couple of those orange type tones in through there. And then I am going to be picking up some yellow and white to add just a couple of little bright highlights on top of my leaves. So they get that really 
beautiful, glistening, autumn kind of, they've been kissed by the sunshine look, maybe pop a couple into that land down below. And then I'm going to wash my brush so I can tackle my snow on my winter tree. So I'm washing and drying my brush and I'm just going to use some white. So I washed and dried my brush, going to pick up some white and I'm going to be a little bit more strategic about where I put this. I'm just really using the corner of my brush. I'm just having it kind of sit on the branches. You could, if you wanted to, you could certainly use your small brush if that helps um, to keep you in control of where you're putting this snow. Um, but I just tend to use whatever brush is in my hand, so that's gonna be this one. <laughs> so I've got some snow there. I'm gonna pile up a little bit of snow at the bottom of the tree, something like that. Yeah, that's looking good. And if you needed or wanted snow anywhere else, snow can like sit in the little, in the little crevices of the tree. Ooh, that looks good. And then let's see, what are we gonna do for the next step? We're gonna use our small brush for the next step. So once you get this done, you can wash and dry your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting ourselves a cute little snowman. I'm gonna put mine just on this hill, strewed about wherever I want to, probably like the middle of this hill. Uh, the colors I'm gonna be using are black, white. Uh, he needs some sticks, so brown, a scarf, red, and maybe a little blue too. I'm using my small brush. I'm going to start with black and white on my brush, and I'm going to do like the left side of my snowballs. So I want, I'm gonna do like a little C, a bigger C, and then an even bigger one down at the bottom, something like that. That's gonna give me my shadowed side of my snowman. Then I'm just gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white paint to do the brighter side of my snowman. So. This is gonna be a reverse C, something like this. Oh, I think I still had a little bit of the black on my brush, so I'm washing my brush. And then I'm just gonna color in this right-hand side with my white and just dot it to get it to blend a little bit with that shadowed side. And if you wanted more shadow, you could certainly pick up a little bit of, a little bit more black and just kind of get it to work itself in there. But I'm gonna just, I'm not gonna do too, too much here. Just make sure that it, it kind of looks like it blends it in a little bit. You might find that you wanna let it dry a minute to get it to, to blend in, but it's a snowball, so it doesn't have to be smooth. So you can just utilize the corner of your brush and just kind of tap, tap, tap it until it looks like it's, it's working well for you. I need a little bit more white over here on this right hand side something like that just so you can really see it on top of the other snow and then once i've got it on there oops i just threw my brush hold on one second <laughs> i went to wipe it and it went flying so i got it now i'm back um i'm gonna put a little black hat on him so i washed and dried my brush and you can have whatever kind of hat that you want i'm just gonna do like a little top hat so i'm just gonna go with a diagonal line like that you're probably gonna run through a little bit of wet paint so just work through it it might end up being a gray hat whatever happens we're gonna be putting snow on it in a minute so it'll be all right you could even you know make your little edges crooked if you wanted to just have fun with it i'm gonna put some some black buttons. So because my paint is still wet underneath, I'm really using a good amount of paint and I'm just gonna kind of do these kind of thick little dollops of paint for the buttons. So I'm just gonna do one, two, three, four. You can do as many as you want. I'm having my snowman kind of look off to the, to the right hand side. I'm gonna put some brown and black on my brush and I'm gonna do some branches for arms so you can you know have their branches they can really be uh any any which way you would like them to be so that's going to be one branch I'm just reloading my brush black and brown i think my other one is gonna come out somewhere over here and just have 
Well, I guess he's going to have a nice long arm. Maybe he can rake the snow with his arm too. <laughs> Maybe he can have a birdhouse coming off of it. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty big arm. All right. And then um, let's see, we need a little, a little shadow underneath on the snow. So this is where my black, brown, and um, blue and white are going to come into play. I want a little bit of a shadow underneath him. So I just put black, brown, blue, and white on my brush just to make it look like it's like in the snow as opposed to part of him. So you can play with those colors. Maybe you don't want to put blue. Whatever works for you is totally fine by me. So something like that is going to give me a little bit of a, sh a snow shadow. I think I need a little more white on here just to, just to make it look like it's in the snow. Yeah, that works. Now I need to give him a little bit of a face. So again, I'm just going to... Pretend like I'm doing little stones or something. I'm just going to do two little eyes. And then he's going to have a cute little mouth. Um, I'm going to do little little dots, like a little smile, something like that. I, he, I'm going to put a scarf on him. So I'm just quickly washing and drying my brush. I'm going to put some red on my brush. And I'm just going to put it going somewhere on his neck and maybe hanging over the neck a little bit and then just coming down in through here like that and if you felt like you needed a nose on him I'm feeling like I want a nose I'm just gonna mix myself a red yellow and white I didn't say I was gonna use yellow but I'm using it now because I want a nose <laughs> I want him to have a little carrot nose, so red, yellow, and white makes orange. So I'm just pre-mixing myself a little bit of an orange color and just giving the essence of a little bit of a carrot nose. Yeah, there we go. All right, and then I got to just put a little bit of snow on his hat. So washing and drying my brush, put a little bit of snow. I'm going to put some snow on the brim of the hat, something like that, and then sitting right on the top of the hat. And then we are going to be using our big brush for the next step. So once you have your cute snowman on here, you can, well, I guess he could have snow on his branches too. You could wash and dry the big brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what I'm gonna be doing for the next step is I'm painting in these last little panels over here. Those are the panels at the end of the film strip that usually don't have a picture on them. They're like hooked onto the reel. So, and they're usually like a translucent kind of brown, grayish, blackish kind of color. So I'm gonna use my big brush and I'm gonna use black, brown, and white, but I'm gonna start with a very little bit of black and brown. And I'm gonna use like a dry brush technique. So I've got a tiny bit of brown and a tiny bit of black. You can always add more, um, but it's easier to start with very little paint. And if you cross over your, your pencil line, it's okay, because again, we're gonna be doing a, an outline later. So I've just got brown and black on my brush, very little bit of paint, and I'm just getting up, right up to the edges there, and I'm just gonna rub it in. So you're gonna end up with some light spots and some dark spots, which is totally fine. Um, but what you wanna be careful of is over, over scrubbing. Because if you over scrub, what may end up happening is you get a bald spot on your canvas with a weird outline, a weird like ring outline to it. So if you start that, if you see that starting to happen, just kind of back off um, and let it dry. And then you can just kind of do another layer on top of it. But I'm going for a, you know, a kind of an uneven look to it anyway. So if that happens, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world that can happen. So again, just a little bit of black and brown is where I'm starting. And I'm just going in this section and just kind of dry brushing it so it's translucent in nature. So just a little bit like that. And I'm not using a lot of paint so I can it allows me to see kind of the variations in those two those two colors. Again, I'm just kind of reloading my brush with a little bit of black and brown so I can get this last little section. And I'm going right up to the edge, but I'm not, again, terribly concerned if it's a perfect match along that edge because we can, we're gonna definitely 
um, clean it up in a little bit. And then I'm just getting all the way to the edge here. And then once I've got it, I feel like I'm starting to get that little outline I was talking about in there. So I need to reload my brush and get a little bit more paint on there just to catch it before, before I end up doing it. So what happens is, is your brain tells you, you don't want a lot of paint, so keep scrubbing, scrubbing, and that's when those outlines start to happen. So if, you, if that starts to happen to you, pick up a little bit more paint to get your brain to stop telling you to really push hard on the brush. Um, or if it's too late and you already did it, then just let it dry and go over it. So I said we we're gonna use white too. So now that this is on here, I'm just gonna pick up a teeny tiny bit of white paint with my dirty brush and I'm almost just going to add this um, like little bit of fog on top of the, the piece of film. So just a little tiny bit of white paint and again don't scrub too hard because it's fresh paint underneath there and you might find this that you can't get this in one shot. This is a kind of a delicate little step here but if you can, great. If not, you can certainly just, you know, play with it until you get it the way that you want. So just a little bit of white paint on my dry surface is allowing me to just get this almost little bit of a fog going on on that, on that piece of film reel or that piece of film. And then we are going to use the same brush for the next step. So once you've got this little section all nice and done, you can wash and dry the large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're adding a shadow on the surface that I feel my film reel is standing up on. So I don't want this to look like it's floating in the air, so I wanna kind of ground it. So I'm gonna put a shadow in this area, around this edge and around the bottom. I'm using my big brush and the colors I'm using are black, brown, and my background color. So I want this to look like this, the light source is not super close, it's maybe far away, so this is just gonna be really kind of a subtle shadow, um, but it is gonna take up a big area. So I'm gonna start, if you're nervous about it, start with brown and then work your way towards a little bit darker. So I'm starting with brown on my brush and I'm in my head, this whole piece is kind of casting a shadow in through here and around this corner a little bit. And then this piece is casting a shadow down below. So, and the shadow would normally be darkest right at the edge where it's hitting the object. So I have brown on my brush right now and I'm just gonna start to get it all the way in through here. And you can, if you want to, use a touch of um, water to make sure that it kind of stays nice and fluid for you. Um, you can also just use your original background color to keep that paint fluid for you, but you want to, I'm trying to get mine to kind of be a gradient into um, the regular color too. So I am, I just am still picking up brown at this point. So I'm picking up brown and just kind of getting these shadows to start in a uniform way and I'm just going to get this around this edge a little bit and I'm just really kind of brushing it out so it um, almost fades into the surrounding area so something like this and then I'm just working it until I feel like it dry it's kind of on the drier side and then I'm just letting it kind of dissipate into the surrounding area. I think I'm gonna put a little bit more in through here just to make sure that that shadow kind of is, translates as long enough. And then I'm just kind of brushing it out like this. I am gonna now put a tiny bit of black paint on my brush, maybe black with a little bit of brown. I definitely, I really want this to kind of read as nice and dark up and through here but again I don't need it to be too 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 um, dark but I definitely want a little bit in through there and again it doesn't have to be perfect along the edge because we're going to be coming back 
with that border along the film reel too. So don't worry if it's if you're not executing this perfectly. And then I'm gonna do a little bit down in through here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up, without washing my brush, I'm picking up some of my original background color. It's gonna look a little bit weird because I know that my background color when it's wet is lighter than it is when it's dry. So when I do this, don't be alarmed for you visually to see mine or to do yours too, because if you're going the same color palette, you'll notice it's gonna be a little scary initially because it's not gonna look like it matches. It will when it dries. So I have a little bit of my background color on my dirty brush, and I'm gonna get it to work into the rest of this center area because I know that I have the remnants of the brown and the black, so I know it's gonna be tonally a little bit darker in this area now because I'm intermingling it with that black and the brown. And then you can just kind of get it to work its way into that shadow. And again, you might not get it on the first shot and that's okay. Just kind of keep working at it until you feel like you've got it. Um, I just picked up some more of my background color, making sure that I get this to look like it works together. And if you want to add more or less, feel free to do so. Again, I want to make sure that these two look like they work together. So I picked up some of my background color. And if I needed to pick up more brown just to make sure that they blended a little bit better or to my satisfaction, then I could certainly, without washing my brush, I just picked up a little bit of brown and just get them to blend in again to your satisfaction so i think i'm going to put a little bit around this corner here too not much just just the hint of a shadow and you can keep tweaking yours and playing with it until you feel like you've got your shadow in a in a nice intensity um, again it might not happen on the first go around you might have to keep playing with adding you know layers of the brown or layers of you know your background color I have remnants on my brush now. I can always utilize that to just extend that little shadow just a little bit more, give it a little bit more depth. Yeah, that works. And then I'll do the same thing up in this corner. And then we are gonna be using our small brush for the next step. So once you've got your shadow all nice and perfected, you can put the large brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is our first step to the border of the film reel. So there's gonna be several little steps and I didn't wanna overdo it on one step, so I'm just gonna break it down for us. Um, I'm gonna be using my small brush and I'm gonna be using black paint and I want my lines to be on the cleaner side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna water down my black paint a little bit. So what I do is I take my small brush and I'm just adding a couple of drops to my black paint and making it so it's almost like an ink consistency. And then I take my brush and I spin it on the side of my palette so it's nice and pointy. So when I do these lines, I'm not gonna be pushing hard initially. Um, I will when I want a wider line, but initially I'm just gonna do a nice thin line um, to get them where I want and then I will tweak them after that. So what we're first gonna do is we're gonna do one black outline on the top of the film reel and on the bottom of the film reel. So however you want to do yours, if you wanna start at the top and work your way down or the bottom and work your way up, it's totally up to you. So I'm just taking black paint and going along the edge. And again, if it does, if you don't do it perfect on the first shot, it's okay. We can certainly, you know, modify it. And if your brain works better going left to right or right to left, whatever works for you is totally fine. So I'm just gonna go this way. I'm watching my prize, which is the other dot. I want this to kind of look like a nice fluid motion. And if I miss something, I can always clean it up later. You know, don't feel like this is the end all be all. We can certainly make 
little corrections and modifications later and you know the the reel itself can look like it's a little bit wobbly so don't feel like you know everything has to be super duper perfect at this point so i did that one i'm also gonna um oops sorry come down here and do this bottom one here and i'm trying to you know stay pretty true to my original line but if you again if you wobble a little bit or if it doesn't come out perfect life's gonna go on we just we just enjoy the process that's that's what i'm all about that's what this painting thing is for me is just a way to express ourselves and to enjoy the process and not care or not 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 care but not feel the anxiety that some sometimes we we put upon ourselves to make things look perfect so that's going to be that one i'm going to come down and do this edge something like this sorry if my hand's in the way sometimes when i do these little lines sometimes i just have to have my hand in the in the correct position for <laughs> for it to work properly for me so i'm just i'm adding a little bit more water to my paint so that way I have a nice fluid stroke. So this in essence is the top here. So I'm gonna just come right down in through here and just make sure that I've got my line on there. And your lines might be thicker than mine. They might be thinner than mine. It's gonna work out because we're gonna be adjusting them in a minute to, um, these bottom ones are gonna actually end up thicker anyways. And whatever happens on the top one, we can, we can always adjust it a little bit as well. So once I've got that one, I've got my one at the bottom edge that I'm gonna do. So down at the bottom, just following along the where the um, film reel meets the, the background color or the, the surface in which it is sitting on now that we've put a shadow, we've, we've grounded our, our film reel onto a surface and then we have, um, before we go on to the next little step to this, we're going to repeat what we just did only a little bit away from the one that we just did. So I'm going to go up the top. This, this top reel is smaller than this one. So what I'm going to do, I'm in essence kind of making, um, a, another line maybe about a quarter of an inch above this first one so how i'm going to do this is i'm going to make myself a little vertical line in through here and then when i go around this corner here it's going to be up and then it's going to meet here and then it's going to be on above this line so i'll show you what i'm talking about and then you just ride it along till here and then it repeats over here so i'll show you what i'm talking about so I'm going to take this and I'm going to go like this, ride it, and then right, you're going to bring it to that corner right there. And then as you come around this corner, you're going to be above the line, above the first one that you made. So something like that. And then you're just going to do a, an, another line or just continue this line all the way across. And it's about, I don't know, an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch away from the original line. Something like this. And you'll get your rhythm. And again, it doesn't have to be super perfect right now. But I'm just going to kind of keep going. And if you, you know, make little boo-boos where it's like, oh, it was thicker there than I wanted it to be. Um, as I come around this corner, I'm going to meet it here. And then when I go to do this part I'm going to be about a half of an inch. You're going to see a bigger space than I have here because this is going to be closer to us. So you'll see how I'm going to do this. I'm going to come around this corner. I'm going to meet it on this vertical edge and then as I shift to coming around here I'm going to leave a bigger gap. So the gap is going to be more like a half of an inch as opposed to a quarter of an inch like it was above and then I'm just watching this bottom section or the you know that subsequent bottom line of that particular area 
And again, if it's not perfect, life's going to go on. And then I'm going to do the same thing when it comes over into this corner over here. You could, if you wanted to, do your vertical line like this. Come around. i got to put my brush in the correct position. Come around like this and then meet that corner like that. And again, little boo-boos can be fixed, so don't don't sweat the small stuff when we're doing this. And then this would come over like this. And then these two have got to meet something like that. And then I have um, the two bottom edges. So they're going to be similar to what we just did. So they're going to be about a half of an inch away. I'm going below it below the picture, outside of the picture. So this is gonna be about a quarter of an inch away from my first line. And it, you're gonna see the shadow underneath it, which is gonna give us a cool effect. Gonna come over here, sorry, I know I'm switching from one side to the other, that's just the way my brain works. I kinda like meet them in the middle somewhere. So something like this. And then I've got that one last line to go at the bottom and then we will then we'll we'll cut it into another step so that way we don't we don't get too overwhelmed with one making one one section too long so then i'm gonna just bring this down this is going to be about a half of an inch gap between the two lines so just bring this in through here something like this and again you can totally make little modifications. And you can tell I'm just going by sight. I am not measuring. I'm just enjoying the process. And if it comes out something that I'm proud of, awesome, that's a bonus. If it comes out something that, you know, I just enjoy the process too, then that's, that's all I've intended to do. And then we are going to use the same brush for the next step. And feel free before we go on to the next step to tweak your lines, make them the way that you want them to be. If you feel like they need a little bit more finessing, feel free to do so. And then we'll use the same brush for the next step so you can just get ready. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we are doing our vertical separating lines for our panels. So we're going to have it in the panels and then we also have little vertical lines up in the top and the bottom of the film strip itself. I'm going to be using my small brush and I'm going to be using black paint. So you've got markers already to start the separation between your seasons. So really all you need to do is do a vertical line between them. The top ones should be maybe about a quarter of an inch thick and then the bottom ones can be about a half of an inch to an inch thick because they're closer to us. So again, just try and stay vertical. Um, the, the trick is to do just that, <laughs> to stay vertical because your brain, again, is going to want you to tip it a little bit because of um, the curved lines that are throughout the rest of the painting. So just feel free to, um, you know, do whatever you've got to do to to keep yours nice and vertical. And I'm pushing my brush a little bit f firmer so I can get the width that I want. So I did one, um, one line down the center like that just to put it in position. And then I can just kind of tweak it and make it a little bit, again, I want mine about a quarter of an inch thick. And my brush is allowing me to get just about that width. So you can maybe put one or two vertical lines next to each other to make it the width that you want, or you can just kind of push your brush enough to get um, the width that you want. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do this one in through here. So again, I'm just kind of going along the existing seam that I already have, and then you can widen it um, to, what, to the width that you really desire to have. And for me, it's gonna be about a quarter of an inch. And maybe you are working on a bigger canvas or a smaller canvas and you want yours 
bigger or smaller than mine, so just feel free to make it size appropriate to whatever canvas or, you know, maybe you decided to do a different kind of um, scenery than I did, and maybe you have six panels or, you know, eight panels. So I'm gonna go ahead and come down where I already have my existing seam, and then this one's gonna be about a half of an inch wide, so I'm gonna have to put, you know, several um, vertical lines next to each other to get it the, the width that I want. And maybe yours comes more into your autumn side. Maybe it straddles nice and neatly over that center line. You just visually do whatever works for you. Seeing as I didn't measure my sections coming into it, I felt like this was the best balance to bring this, the wider part of this line to the left in front of my autumn scene here. Plus I didn't want to encroach on my cute little snowman that I that I had going. All right, so that looks pretty good. So I have this other one over here. And again, I'm just gonna kind of go down that seam to the best of my vertical ability. And hopefully I'm staying pretty straight. Not only am I um, working near curved lines, but I'm also painting from an angle here. So hopefully, hopefully I'm keeping them straight enough for you guys to, to get the gist here and I'm, I'm keeping them the way that I want them. So again, I'm just widening this to almost about a half of an inch, um, maybe a little shy of that. And then I've got to close off the, this back side up here. So I'm just going to kind of make myself a vertical line in through here. It does not have to match up with this section down here. It's a totally different section up above. I'm gonna do the same thing up here. So I'm gonna just kind of travel down. Oh, this one's gonna match up. I didn't mean for that to happen, but it, it happened, which is totally fine. Just gonna kind of bring this here. So on a film strip, the top um, sections have little holes in them that get spun in the reel. So that's what that we're creating these see-through spots. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make a whole bunch more vertical lines throughout the top and the bottom. And I'm gonna try and equally space them, but I might not get them perfect. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my um, mathematical sight and say I'm gonna go one in between here one in between here and then I might just kind of quarter them at that point so I'm just gonna kind of do it maybe about a half of an inch or a quarter of an inch wide something like that and whatever you um, want to do to get your brain to work similarly from the top to the bottom and in a in a way that makes kind of sense for you to look at, then that's that's the way that you do it. So if I did it there, maybe I'll do one here and add about the same width and travel down and try and make it similar at the bottom. So I'm just gonna keep going throughout this whole process or throughout this whole section. So maybe I've got one in through here. I've got one in through here. Oh, maybe I'll put one right on here. That makes it easy for me. So I'll just do the same thing down below. And you can see I'm just kind of doing similar size marks. So this in essence is the non-see-through part, this black part that we're putting on now. And then the see-through part is clearly the part that you can um, see the background through. And maybe you want yours, your, um, the, maybe these become squares or longer rectangles than I have. I need to finish this space over here. So maybe this is gonna go something like this. Get a couple going around this corner. This one kind of straddles like that. And then maybe I just do a couple little sections up in through here. Perfect. And then I'm just gonna kind of travel right along the whole the whole film reel like that. So I know that I have one on each one that straddles that, that center section like this. And again, some of these areas might get a little weird or confusing to look at just because 
you know, you know you're um, going, you're doing something that's got a, a an interesting element to it, a, a, a see-through element. So I am trying to keep my lines, my edges to these sections vertical and not try not to do diagonal. So that way it remains like it's still standing up. So this section is going to be a little weird. I think this would probably be about the center somewhere in here. And they're going to get bigger as they come along this side here. So I'm going to just try and do the best I can to get it visually um, correct. But I think there'd be one in the middle there that we wouldn't see. Um, the top looks pretty good to me, but I, and I'm going to stay kind of true to what I did up top. So if I had a big section here, I'm going to put a um, one that straddles these sections in through here. So just like that, and I can do that to all four. And this keeps me pretty, um, it, in an easy way, gives me symmetry throughout the entire thing. So I know that when we do these type of paintings where there's lots of lines and there's lots of kind of uh, visual order that we're trying to emulate. It can get confusing. It can get frustrating. But if you can give yourself some simple guides to follow, like, okay, well, I did this up here on each one of these center ones. Let me do that down below as well. And then you can just kind of build off of it. Then I had one in the center. I had one in the center. So now I'm going to put one in the center and I want it about as wide as these ones. So that just, again, visually gives me an easy path to follow. And then I'll just come directly below it and do another one down here. And then I've got two more in between, which I didn't give myself a ton of space, but it's okay. We'll figure out a way to, to make it make sense. So something like that. I'll have to close my gaps up a little bit up top because I think I made them wider down below. We'll figure it out. But again, I'm not concerned or not going to worry too hard if it's not perfect. As long as it gives some sort of, um, you know, good visual guidance to the viewer, I'm good. And then I've got this one. Oh, I got that little section over there too, but let me just kind of finish up here. So if this was the center, maybe I'd have one right in through here. And you can see I'm kind of painting slowly right now to these side edges are really difficult for my brain to make sure that I keep them in a nice vertical position. So again, this is gonna go something like this and just gonna paint it all in here. And maybe I'm going to have one coming around this corner. I feel like there needs to be a little bit of one right in through here. Yeah, that works. And then I just need to touch over here. So I think I'm going to have, I don't like this corner, so we're just going to hide it with one of these little things like that. And then maybe this one has a full one at the edge here. Yeah, that looks good. And then do the same thing down here. And then we are going to use the same brush for the next step. So once you've got these vertical separators in, tweak it until you feel like yours is nice and good. I think I'm going to widen mine up at the top, but we are going to be using this same brush for the next step. So you can just get ready. All right. So what we're going to do for the next step is we're doing a highlight at the top of our reel. So you already put your shadows underneath. So I want to add to the dimensional element. So I'm going to put a little bit of highlight on the top. You could even put a little bit of highlight in through these um, areas that are kind of protruding towards us. So I'm going to use my small brush and I'm going to use black and white paint on my brush. And I'm really going to just use a light sketchy kind of motion on the top of um, the top edge of the, of the reel the of the film itself. So I don't need a super clean line. I'm really just looking for something that is noticeably with a, a, a little touches of highlights here and there. 
And it doesn't just have to go at the tippy tippy top. You could certainly add it a little bit into wherever you feel is going to be popping out the most. So it can come in through this area too because this kind of protrudes a little bit. You could even put a little bit in through there if you wanted to. So definitely along the top edge, but then if you have an area that you feel would be protruding out a little bit, you can certainly add a touch here and there to um, get that to happen as well. And I don't like this line to be super duper clean because to me it's almost like a metal type surface, um, which can sometimes cast lights in different um, in different areas or if the light is on in the room it might have you know just one section that's lighter than another so it doesn't have to be a systematic line you can really have some some spots to it that are light and some spots that are dark so I'm going to go ahead and get this edge over here as well so again along that top edge just kind of using this light sketchy kind of motion and if you bump into things that you didn't want to bump into you can certainly come back and and do any little touch-ups that you want I'm going to put some over here along this top edge and again doesn't have to be 100% clean you can just kind of sketch it on there and that's going to make it look really nice and natural and then I'm definitely going to put some down these front little panels in through here I don't have much paint on my brush and I'm just kind of loosely sketching it on there maybe some along here because this whole area to me feels like it pops out I just got some in an area that I didn't want to which is right in here but I will go back and touch that up with my with my other color in a minute. So something like that totally works for me. I'm gonna put a little highlight down here too because this whole area to me feels like it pops out a little bit. So this is gonna enhance that story of telling the viewer that this little piece of the film is popping out closer to us. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. And then we have one tiny little step left to go and it's gonna be with the small brush. So once you've got your highlights on your film reel, you can wash and dry the small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I am gonna be using my small brush and I'm gonna be using black paint. I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right corner, I think. I think I'm gonna sign this one in the bottom right corner. So I do my initials. You could certainly do your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you want to be your identifying mark is totally fine. It's your painting, you, you put whatever kind of mark you'd like to on it. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a really kind of cool four season painting and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.